Welcome everybody to another great episode of the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. I'm Allen, and today we have a wonderful guest for you. We have none other than author Eric Vickery of the Season of Shattered Dreams joining us here today on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. That's right. Eric is going to explain to us why he wrote an outstanding book about the 1946 Spokane Indians and the tragedy that bus tragedy to happen en route to a game something that brought back a lot of memories and something you really need to hear about. So we're going to talk about Eric and his great book in just a few moments. But before we get started, let's thank our wonderful sponsor, Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce. So delicious and addicting, you may need a support group. Feel free to visit my great friend, Chef G's, right here in beautiful Tampa, Florida at 301 South 22nd Street, Tampa, Florida. And if you can't come down to Tampa, that's all right. Feel free to visit Chef G's right here at flbbqsauce.com. Again, it's flbbqsauce.com. Don't forget that great sauce. So without further ado, let's go ahead and bring on Eric. Let's discuss his wonderful book. Let's go. All right, so we're joined here by a wonderful guest here on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. We have author Eric Vickery. And he wrote a fantastic book. It's about the 1946 Spokane Indians, the tragic event that happened there. Eric will tell us a bit more about that. Book is called uh, Season of Shattered Dreams. There you go, Season of Shattered Dreams. So we'll go ahead and get started. What gave you the passion to write this book? Hey, Alan. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I kind of learned about this story a few years ago. And uh, yeah, it kind of shocked me, just the details of it. It's to this day still the deadliest accident in the history of American professional sports. And when I learned about the details and you know, from my love of baseball history, it was a lot of fun for me to dig into this story and, and kind of bring it to light because I think it has been forgotten over the years. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it is not every day that you think of something that happened in 1946 and it gives you motivation to relive and talk about it. So talk about the, the logistics of coming back to 1946 and explaining what happened. Yeah, so there were obviously you know, a lot of people involved in the story. So I kind of did a lot of research on each individual player. At the time of the accident, there were 18 different players on the team. You know, all of them had different backgrounds and, and stories. And so it was kind of doing like researching 18 different people. It was, you know, several of the players truly had fascinating stories. Some of them had played in the big leagues before uh, 46. Some of them survived by crash and had long careers afterwards. So, um, yeah, so there's a lot of uh, digging through newspaper archives, uh, reading books about you know, 46 and a year after the war, um, and interviewing some family members and people that were involved in this story. Oh, wow. So you did a lot of extensive research and actually was able to meet some people connected to the story. That's fantastic. Yeah, that was a really cool part of it for me was yeah, connecting with children, nieces, nephews, anybody I could get in touch with who's you know still alive. All the, the players, of course, who were involved in this story are, have, have passed, but there are still people alive who have very vivid memories of these people. And, and in fact, some of them still have scrapbooks with letters and photos and uh, some great information that, that helped bring the story to light. Yeah, it is really fascinating. So you really must be kind of like a writer and a historian all in one. Yeah, I, I would say that's accurate. I, I enjoy kind of both parts of the writing because, you know, the, the first part of, of this was several months of just research and kind of pulling together all the information and then figuring out how I wanted to piece it together into a cohesive story. And then, and then you know, sitting down to write it was a whole different process, equally enjoyable, but a little bit different. And then, you know, creating what, what came to be a season of Shattered Dreams. Yeah, I mean, the book is fascinating, especially when I started reading it, it was like, wow, you know, it is a huge tragedy that in today's day and age, it would be unfathomable for something like that to happen. You're right. Yeah. You know, thankfully, we haven't had a, an accident to this extent with a professional team. There, of course, have been accidents involving college teams and Olympic teams and teams in other countries. But yeah, fortunately, with all the travel that goes on, you know, fortunately, it has has not happened since since uh, 46. And how long did it take you to actually, I know you researched it for a couple months, how long did it take you from start to finish to write the book? It took me close to a year in total, yeah. I kind of started doing some preliminary research in, in late 2022 and spent the bulk of 2023 writing it and finished about six months ago. Oh, wow. So that's fantastic. The season of Shattered Dreams. And with this project, 
you know, what was some of your motivations throughout the whole process? Was it just getting the story out or just reliving it? Yeah, more, more or less getting the story out because a lot of the people involved in the story especially those who passed, you know, they had some of them very promising baseball careers. Many of them had fought in World War II. And the fact that their stories have been largely forgotten was a big motivation for me to write the book. And then on the flip side, some of the survivors truly had fascinating journeys. Uh, one guy, Ben Garrity, survived the crash and then managed in the minor leagues for many years. I managed Hank Aaron when he was in the Brave system in 53 and managed a bunch of future big leaders. In fact, Henry Aaron, Hank Aaron called him the greatest manager he ever played for and said that one of his regrets is that uh, Ben Garrity never managed in the major leagues. But part of that was because the uh, Ben dealt with ongoing sort of what you might call today post-traumatic stress disorder from the crash and he drank alcohol to kind of cope with those emotions. So, you know, digging into his story was was both heartbreaking, but at the same time, a truly interesting story that I also felt deserved to be told. Yeah, it's, it's almost a, a tragic story for the people who actually did survive that they had to live with this burden of, of guilt and knowing that they made it and some of their teammates didn't. Talk about how hard it must have been on them, the survivors. Yeah, that's exactly right. Some of the survivors lived, you know, well into their 70s and 80s and gave interviews late in their lives where they uh, said that they thought of the crash every day. Uh, whereas one of the players, on the other hand, said that he tried to suppress the memories. So some different ways of coping, but no doubt that the uh, accident had you know, great effects on the, the men who survived, as well as the families of the people involved in the story, you know, getting to know some of those family members who shared some pretty intimate stories and details about how the accident affected their lives was was uh, very impactful for me to hear those stories. Yeah, I mean, and it's it's really astonishing that you actually did this research because this is 1946. For those who don't know, this is a few years after the Titanic. Yeah, yeah it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, nearly 80 years ago now. So yeah, yeah, that was a challenge. I and mean, certainly I would have loved to have interviewed some of the guys who actually were there. Although I, a funny story, I was doing a signing in Spokane just uh, last weekend and a gentleman came to the signing who was 91 years old and he worked at the stadium where the team played in 1946 and was sharing some, some stories and some memories. So there are a few people still around from that era, era but unfortunately there's very few these days. Yeah, you're right. And, and you know, with the book, if somebody is interested in the book, what do you think they would probably walk away from it about more than anything? Yeah, I, I hope, you know, obviously there's the, just the human stories that they would learn about these players, you know, they've probably never heard of, but, you know, had are an important part of uh, baseball history and American history. Uh, the other thing that I think the book sheds light on is just kind of how America was in 1946, the country as a whole, as well as how the war impacted baseball and how baseball was just kind of getting back on its feet in 46, the year after the war ended. And all these returning servicemen who uh, many of them, you know, thousands of them were minor league players who were getting started back in their uh, baseball career. So kind of just shedding a little bit of light on how the war affected the minor leagues and, and what happened in the, the immediate year afterwards. I think readers will be interested in. Yeah, that's fantastic. And, you know, season of Shattered Dreams, they can make sure that they pick that book up. And for yourself, what do you do outside of writing books so that you know to keep up with baseball yeah well my my full-time job is totally unrelated i'm in the medical field but I, I work 12 hour shifts which allows me a couple days off during the week to do my writing and yeah i'm also a big just a big baseball fan so i watch a lot of baseball play play fantasy baseball it's a big part of my life always has been and i, I write some articles as well for like saber and and do some other type of writing and things. So I keep pretty busy between my, my full-time job and this hobby, or I guess you could call it second job. Yeah, and I did see a nice picture, to, a nice picture of a card, a baseball card you had of Ken Griffey Jr. Talk about oh. how great of a player he is. <laughs> oh man, Griffey was unbelievable. I, I remember going to Kansas City. I, I grew up in the St. Louis area, but I had family uh, in Kansas City. So I always made a trip there each summer and I remember specifically going to see the Royals play the Mariners back in the early 90s, just when Griffey was kind of coming onto the scene, you know, and that sweet left-handed stroke, uh, he hit a home run that day. And I actually have a, still have a picture of him rounding, rounding the bases, rounding third. So that's kind of etched in my mind and, you know, watching him mostly on TV, uh, but getting to see him in person a little bit was awesome. And now living in Seattle, you know, 
really uh, have appreciated how great of a player he was and see his statue every time I go to T-Mobile Park in, in Seattle. Really cool. Yeah, I got to check that out. I haven't I haven't been to T-Mobile Park yet, but I got to check out that King Griffey Jr. statue and the park. Yeah, it's pretty nice. And you don't have to worry about rain because it's got the retractable roofs, which is really nice. You know, our summers in Seattle, it hardly ever rains in the summer, but yeah, April, May, and then in September, we can get decent amount of rain but having that retractable roof is really nice and got the uh, downtown skyline and out over left field so it's a cool park and that's i'm assuming your favorite team there there yeah i, I would say now this kind of living in the pacific northwest for the last decade i've become a pretty uh, diehard mariners fan and i've lived through some disappointing seasons but i like kind of where they're headed they got really good uh, pitching young pitching and you know that's the foundation of any successful team i think in baseball is is pitching so anytime you have that you have a chance so i'm hoping this is the year maybe they can win the al west and who knows maybe make the world series for the first time that's right you never know they just got to keep keep the pitching doing well and keep going at it and that's that's what we're going to do is make sure that we help promote the season of shattered dreams <laughs> where can people pick up the book yeah so it's available mostly online sellers it's in a couple stores out in the pacific northwest if anyone is in seattle or spokane but you can find it anywhere online you can uh, buy books such as amazon or my publishers roman and littlefield that's r-o-w-m-a-n dot com uh, or if you just search the names season of shattered dreams book i'm sure it'll come up yeah, I mean, definitely. I'm excited to, to finish reading it because it, it definitely it's it's history. And, and the fact that you did that research is really phenomenal. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, I, a lot of fun. And I'm, I'm just really happy that I can bring this somewhat forgotten story to light. And I think it's an important story for baseball history and American history. And just happy to contribute my small part. That's right. And that's great. And definitely you, make sure you guys get the book Season of Shattered Dreams by author Eric Rickray and definitely thank you so much for joining us here on the Alan Alfred Sports Talk Show. You're very welcome Alan thanks so much thank for you. having me I really appreciate it. Oh you're very welcome thank you so much your success. All right thank you. You're welcome bye-bye now. Bye-bye.